All right. So um, the, the, Walter Kemper, I want you to, um, to know, he originally was a doctor who, like myself, wanted to take care of sick people. And I, I, I'm sure if we just sat down together, he would say something like I've said for so many years, the sicker you are, the happier I am, because that would give me the, the biggest chance to help you get well. You know, it's, it's really, really people are desperate and in big trouble and uh, nothing like being a doctor that can help them get out of trouble. Uh, just like myself, uh, I, Walter Kempner really didn't want to be known as a weight loss doctor, but he became known as a weight loss doctor because the consequence of the rice diet is you lose tremendous amount of excess weight, which is part of curing cardiovascular disease and kidney disease and so on. And I'm, I'm going to talk to you about Walter Kempner's work, but I can say something right now to all the people listening and all the other guests that you have on these shows, Chef H.A., is that until you study and understand Walter Kempner's work, you really don't deserve the stage as far as I'm concerned, because his work is so, so basic. He's such a great scientist that if you don't make this foundation of everything else you say, you're wrong. And, you know, uh, anyway, let, let, let me get into it. And uh, this is one of his publications in 1948. Treatment of Hypertensive Vascular Disease with the Rice Diet. That was his interest. Now, this is Walter Kempter. This is one of the few pictures taken of him. He never liked to get his picture taken. Uh, I had uh, this uh, television show called Lifestyle Magazine. And I went around the country with my crew. And we filmed people like uh, Nathan Pritikin, who's in my uh, February 2013 newsletter. And we filmed uh, Dennis Burkett, who's in my January 2013 newsletter. And they're, they're the only documentaries ever done on either of these men. And they helped me fil film Roy Swank, which is just, he's distributed all over my website. Uh, Dennis Burkett was uh, the fiber man. He's the one that turned my life around when I was a senior medical student. Uh, he told me there was a cause of disease and he told me about his experiences in Africa where he was the head of ministries of health in Africa for uh, 17 years. He took, uh, oversaw more than a thousand hospitals, more than 10 million people. And he explained to me, he saw no heart disease, no obesity, no hemorrhoids, no colon cancer, you know, no, no pulmonary embolus, no deep vein thrombosis, no rheumatoid arthritis. You know, 10 million people over 17 years, over a thousand hospitals he directed, he saw none of these. And that was because they were eating a starch-based diet. So I, you know, I, I'm pretty certain that Walter Kepter learned a lot of his lessons from the kind of observations that Dennis Burkett uh, made. Uh, this, this kind of thinking, this understanding goes back thousands of years and, and certainly hundreds of years. And anybody who claims originality, who doesn't really understand the history of diet, diet therapy, because people have observed observe that rich foods make, make people sick. If you're going to eat like a king and a queen, you're going to eat like an aristocrat, you're going to be overweight, you're going to have diabetes, you're going to have gout in your feet, you're going to be sick. If, if you eat the diet of people who build the pyramids, who work in the fields, picking the, the corn and the beans and the cotton, you know, you're eating a diet of rice and beans and wheat and corn, and, and you're active and, and trim and strong with that kind of diet. So it's, it's something that's, again, people have observed from, you know, 5,000 years ago, there are writings of the, the, the Egyptians and that tells clearly, we understand that rich foods make people sick and there is a basic diet for the human being, which is a starch-based diet. Anyway, uh, Walter Kepner, born in 1903, died in 1997. So he lived a long time. And most of his work, the work that I was really interested in, I, I shunned the work on obesity that I'm going to talk to you about over the next few minutes. The, the work that I was interested in was the work in curing people with severe heart failure and, you know, people dying of kidney disease with the, the rice diet. And he rever reversed a diabetic retinopathy, and, but he did reverse obesity and, and diabetes. And, you know, Walter, Walter kept it because he was different. Well, he came, he came from uh, Germany in 1934. He escaped the Nazi invasion of, uh, or takeover of Western Europe. So in 1934, the head of the, the Department of Internal Medicine at Duke University invited Walter Kepler to move over and head 
the Department of Internal Medicine. And it took him a few years. It took him until 1939 before he formulated the rice diet, which is what he's so famous for. And uh, he had this peculiarity, and that is that I call it a peculiarity. I don't know. He didn't want to have his picture taken. He didn't want to be photographed. And as I was starting to tell you, I had a television show where our crew went all over the country uh, documenting people that I wanted you to see, that I knew it would be gone. And, and I wanted to make sure that they were available. So I could tell you the, the various men, uh, it wasn't the fact, you know, it was just men, it was no women. The various men whose shoulders I stand on, I got them on, you know, I, I got them on video and they're available for you to watch. And you'll see the similarity between what McDougall teaches and what these people teach. You go, ah, oh, McDougall's not original. No, I'm not original. I have my own interpretation of what the truth is, but I stand on the shoulders of some gr very great scientists. And anyway, they're Dennis Burkett, Nathan Pritikin, Walter Kempner, and Roy Swank. So uh, <laughs> we wanted to go to, uh, to Durham, North Carolina and film Walter Kempner and you know, he plain and simply just said, no, you're not going to do it. And his team protected him. And uh, so we never got a chance to go. The two men that worked for him, Frank Nealon, Francis Nealon, medical doctor, internist, and Robert Rosati, same type of credentials. Uh, they were his, uh, they worked for him for like 20 to 30 years. And so they really understood the RICE program. I have both of these men on tape and you'll find them on YouTube. You just look up their names. Uh, Frank Nealon, N-E-A-L-O-N, and Robert Rosati. And uh, you can hear the interviews I did with them, or you can just go to my December 2013 newsletter, and you'll see these, uh, these interviews of these men who describe some of the life of, and some of the work of, uh, of Dr. Kempner. But Dr. Kempner knew who I was. And the reason I know that is because uh, one of my patients had been to the Rice program and, and uh, she mentioned my name as a doctor on the West Coast. And he said, come on here, come on, come on in my library. And I wanna show you what I, what I have here. He said, uh, you see this book? You see what this doctor said about me? And that's in the book, McDougall's Medicine, the challenging second opinion on the chapter on hypertension. I, I dedicated a page to Walter Kemper. He was so pleased that somebody recognized what he did, the accomplishments, and wasn't always to try, trying to, to, to prove him wrong. But, you know, he was right, he's still right to today. You know, Walter Kempner was, uh, he was investigated all the time. Uh, one of the things that the st uh, state of uh, North Carolina did is they, the medical system, they, they sent a, a, a team from the medical board to investigate Walter Kemper because they didn't think Walter Kemper kept very good patient notes. He didn't write down anything, but what he did is he took photographs of everything. And when they left there, they said, you know, these, this is the best medical records we've ever seen of any doctor, any place. So he did take great medical records. And any, anyway, uh, I, I know you want to uh, talk about the weight loss aspects and, the publication, it's in the Archives of Internal Medicine, published in 1975. And you can get this paper. If not, you not open access, uh, freely available on the internet, and it may not be. Your library can get it for you. It's a report on uh, 106 massively obese people. These are people who have a BMI of greater than 50%. In other words, 50% of their body is made up of fat. And uh, that's what Walter Kempner became famous for. Uh, Buddy Hackett used to go there and used to be a big joke that Buddy Hackett would order pizzas just to make Walter mad. And, uh, and a lot of other movie stars went to the rice diet, which is in Durham, North Carolina. And the rice diet, they had a, a house where they did their medical examinations. And then throughout the community in Durham, North Carolina, they had various places for people to stay and for people to eat. And uh, they would they would come and uh, they would come and you know take up residence and you stayed there until you got well. You know it wasn't a ten day program like ours or a twelve day program like the one we run now. You you were there until you got out of trouble and you know you were ready to leave. That was the way it was. And the community was very accom accommodating. 
uh, part of the reason they were accommodating is that the Rice Diet was at Durham, was at Duke University for seven decades. And for two decades, the Rice Diet was the primary financial income of Duke University. So he brought a lot of money to that community with his fame, you know, with, uh, with bringing interest to various places for people to stay in restaurants and et cetera. Well, you know, eventually what happened was uh, the real doctors, you know, the doctors that push the drugs and manage patients and never cause anybody to get well. They of course got jealous. There was some financial jealousy there too. And eventually they, they kicked the, the rice diet out. It happened about 20 years ago. And uh, it had nothing to do, it had everything to do with politics, it had nothing to do with science. And they put in a moderate, reasonable, sensible way for you to deal with heart disease, and which doesn't, doesn't work nearly as well as this approach does. But let, let's start out with the, the obesity part. And uh, for example, here, here's a lady, you see some nice pictures of her. She lost 121 pounds in 11 months on the rice diet. And uh, this, this, this guy, he lost 112 pounds in 11 months. Uh, what you need to know is for all age groups, and he separated out the different age groups, for all age groups, so men lost uh, more weight than women did. I'd have to say that's true. I find that also is men lose more and uh, they lose faster than women do. I, I, I don't know all the reasons why maybe, maybe they're more active, but uh, that, that's what he found and that's what I found also. Here's a guy who lost uh, 311 pounds, excuse me, not a 311 pounds. He went from 311 pounds to 179 pounds. So uh, he did that in 144 days. And here's the, the, the bottom set of pictures of men who went from uh, 467 pounds. So you see this, this is not your usual obesity, this is massive obesity. And he dropped to 189 pounds and he did that in a little over a year. And uh, here's the lady who went from 212 to 98 pounds. And she did that in 234 days. So just short of a year on the rice diet. And here you have a lady who lost 152 pounds in a year. That's three pounds a week. Now I want you to remember that three pounds a week as I, as I talked to you about something a little different than the rice diet. And I, I will compare what we do to the Kepler program, not with any criticism or, you just have to realize how much I respect this man and his work. And uh, he, he's really laid the foundation for what I do today. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's a, just a year long study of a patient and what happened to uh, this particular patient, he lost 121 pounds in a year. That's 2.3 pounds a week. And here's uh, another patient they reported on with a graph. He's lost uh, five pounds a week. And, and what happened was uh, the, when you started out, you lost more weight than when you got tremor. And I think part of the reason is why is because when you start out, you have to carry around this excess amount of fat. And, and that's a lot of energy expenditure. And as you get closer to turn body weight, what happens is your rate of weight loss slows down because you are not carrying around all the extra fat. Turn body weight. And by the way, by the way, carrying around excess that, uh, that, that amount of fat builds a lot of muscle too. So these aren't people who have, uh, who have uh, you know, atrophied muscles. They're, they're really, really underneath all that fat is a lot of strength. And, uh, you know, part of what they lose in addition to body fat is they lose muscle weight. They don't need all that muscle to carry all that fat around. Uh, here is the, um, and I, I wanna take a moment on this. Uh, this is what's described as the, uh, as what the Rice program is uh, for treating massive obesity. Now, remember this is for treating massive you know, the, those really morbidly obese people, not, not the average person, you know, not the patient who is oh, just obese, but uh, somebody who is morbidly obese. So they prescribed a diet, uh, which was uh, low in calorie. They restricted the amount of food that the people got to eat. 
which, you know, it's, it's a big burden to be hungry all the time. And they had community support. They had lots of other people who were involved in the rice diet that could encourage them to not, not abandon it and go home. And so a lot of people lasted a long time. They're really desperate folks, but they consumed, you know, 400, 800 calories a day. So the uh, diet was uh, 90 to 95% rice and fruit. All right, so it was calorie restricted and 90 to 95% of the calories came from rice and fruit, uh, primarily white rice. And uh, they lost a lot of water when they first started out. The, the diet is low calorie, low salt, low protein. You know, Walter Kepner really, really thought the issues of sodium and protein were very, very important. Low fat, essentially cholesterol free. And that's why in addition to losing the weight, you know, their blood pressures came down, their cholesterols came down, et cetera. You know, tr tremendous drops, tremendous improvement in health. They got their health back with the rice diet. Now this is, this is a, a, what we're talking about, the, the weight loss program too. So do understand that the treatment of massive, massive obesity did involve calorie restriction, but not, not when it came to just people who were sick. Okay, for people who Walter Kempner really originally wanted to take care of, and, and my intention as a medical doctor is to take care of patients, you know, Weight loss, I never wanted to get into the weight loss business. I was kind of forced into it. And I wrote the McDougall program for maximum weight loss 34 years ago, which is still a national bestseller. But it wasn't my first choice. And it was just there was a lot of demand. And the reason it's still selling as a big seller for Penguin, Putton, and Dutton is uh, because you folks, I realize, I'm sorry it took me so long, but I realize that losing weight is paramount on most of your minds until you get really sick. And until you get terrible diabetes, terrible heart disease, terrible kidney fa failure, et cetera, inflammatory arthritis, et cetera. And then, then the weight loss becomes secondary. All right, so this is the basic diet. Okay, the diet is rice, white rice. You, you ask why was it white rice? Well, Walter Kempner said that it was um, more palatable and more familiar to people, easier to get. It had nothing to do about the therapeutic value of rice. Uh, it had to do with the availability and the acceptance of the rice. You could, you can follow the rice diet by eating whole grain rice anytime you want. Now, uh, Walter Kemper is such a bugaboo about sodium that they used to actually whitewash the rice with the idea that they somehow might get some extra salt out of the rice by washing it under, under water. So it was uh, white rice, fruit, fruit juice, table sugar. He also gave him some vitamin pills, which, uh, you know, we, we could talk about in, in some detail. I, uh, if you're going to feed this kind of diet, I understand what he did, just so he wouldn't get any criticism. But, uh, you know, the kind of diet I recommend with uh, whole foods and you don't run into vitamin problems except for B12. And that's mostly theoretical, but one that I always bring up is in addition to our program. Sometimes Walter Kempner had to add extra sugar because people were losing so much weight so, so, so rapidly. And so he would add as much as 500 grams, which is 2000 calories of table sugar a day to his patients who were there to be treated to get well. Yes, it was a diet of sugar. Why? Because, because the body metabolizes sugar so efficiently. It's called glycolysis. So what you learned in, in high school and junior high school and certainly your college dietetic courses and, and biochemical courses, you learn that the primary energy metabolism occurs through the process of burning sugar, glycolysis. I know, I know. Everybody's got you scared of sugar. Well, you know, maybe table sugar is not health food. It's not health food. Rots your teeth. It uh, provides calories without any other nutrients. So it's empty calories, has no fiber, has no protein. You know, it's, it's something we don't encourage is, uh, is table sugar, except that we want you to like the food. And so one of the things you're missing secondarily when you go on the McDougal diet is you, you miss the sugar. You, you know, your oatmeal tastes much better if you put it 
half a teaspoon of table sugar on your cereal. And, you know, I, I want you to eat your oatmeal, so I don't have any problem with that. And if you change to this kind of eating plan, then the primary thing you're missing is salt. And of course, that was one of the biggest barriers of the of the Kempner diet is you got just plain and simple, no salt. And that was, that was a big, big part of the diet. So if you take a look at the, the chart I have here, you see compared to the ordinary mixed American diet, which was 38% fat, you know, high in protein, uh, six, six grams or six, uh, six grams of salt, or actually it's not it's more than six grams or less than six grams. And depending upon, uh, you know, you, you have to add sodium and chloride together to get the total amount of grams. So this would be about 10 grams. And was uh, relatively deficient in carbohydrate. And most of the carbohydrates are simple carbohydrates. The rice diet, okay, fruit, fruit juice, white rice and table sugar was only 2% fat. It was essentially zero cholesterol. It was low in protein, which was very important to having the body heal. You've got to take the protein, the burden of excess protein off of the organs. You know, it's, uh, I, know I know you've been taught that protein is the, the miracle nutrient and everything you want to seek at the grocery store is protein, protein powders, you know, high protein this, high protein that. And it, it's exactly the opposite of what you need to heal. So his diet was, uh, was very low in protein. It was only 4%. Sweet potatoes are like 6% protein. Rice is about 8% protein. Uh, oatmeal is about 16% protein. Beans are about 20 to 30% protein. So by adding the extra table sugar, he brought the protein content even lower, which was favorable to healing to get the protein burden out of the system. So it was uh, 93, 94% of the calories when you ate the race diet came from sugar, either complex sugar in the form of rice or simple sugar in the form of fruit, fruit juice and table sugar. I know, I know that's exactly what you, the opposite of what you've been taught, but what you've been taught is wrong. And that's why you don't see people getting well. Now, you may ask yourself, why, why are so many people taught this the incorrect information? Well, where you make your money is you make your money on, on uh, processed foods, high protein foods like the meat and the, and the chickens and the fish. And you know, what they're sold to you is, is uh, because you should buy them. You should buy them because of the protein. And uh, they're the expensive things. That's how you make, make the money. And of course the protein powders, they say all those, a lot of money's generated there. And, and that's ba basically it. But you got to restart thinking thing, rethinking things. You could start by knowing the fact that there's never been a case of protein deficiency due to any diet ever fed to any human being of all of human history. You don't have friends who have protein deficiency or amino acid deficiency. And when you go search the science, as I've done carefully over the last 46 years, I cannot find a single case of, of uh, protein deficiency due to inadequate protein in a diet. And yet that's the nutrient you're sold. You know, that's the nutrient that you teach your kids. And my parents taught me is, you know, you know, Johnny, it, all we have to do is make sure you get enough protein, enough calcium. Even though at that time it was known, in fact, it was known for at least a hundred years, I could document it, that the need for protein is so low in the human being that you cannot reach that low level with any known diet. And there's never been a case of dietary calcium deficiency ever reported on a natural diet. And we have two huge industries based on selling you protein and calcium, which is one of the biggest lies in all of human nutrition. I'll challenge, you know, any dietitian, any scientist, uh, any medical doctor, anybody that's interested to show me the opposite. Anyway, let's, let's move along. Uh, here's some of the work that uh, Walter Kempner uh, did with people with diabetic retinopathy. This means in the back of the eye. You can see the blood vessels by looking through an ophthalmoscope, which is an instrument I've been using for over 50 years. It's uh, where the doctor has an instrument that sh shines a light and you can look through the lens of the eye into the back of the eye. You can look at the retina, you can look at, you can actually see the blood vessels 
And, and not only can you see blood vessels that are in the eye, this same architecture of vessels goes throughout the entire body. So what you see in the eye is present in the kidneys, is present in the brain. It's every place. But you have this window of opportunity to look into the eyes. And you do that. Every doctor was taught this technique. Not so much now as when I was a, a training doctor. The younger doctors, uh, it's, it's not a solid enough part of their training that it should be. Anyway, here you see a diseased eye. This is some patient who has diabetic retinopathy, which we treat with laser therapy today, which is inadequate compared to what you would do with a healthy diet. Anyway, that's the way it's treated you, with, with laser treatments. And, but this is a person who has severe diabetic retinopathy. You see the picture on your left. You see the white exudates. The exudates, so they're, white, they're fatty, fatty material that gets, it leaks out of the arteries into the, the retinal tissues. And the other thing that happens is the little blood vessels, they, they hemorrhage, they break. You bleed in the eye. And so you have these flame hemorrhages. And hopefully you can identify what I'm talking about in the left picture. You see these red blushes. These are called flame hemorrhages. And this is what a diabetic has in the back of their eye. Well, uh, Walter Kempner, he reported 20, 20 out of the 44 patients who had severe diabetic retinopathy uh, very quickly showed a change, a healing in their diabetic retinopathy on the rice diet. So if you look at the picture on the right, you see the healing, the exudates are gone. The flame hemorrhages are gone. And that happened to half the patients he put on the rice diet. And, and that's why he had such good medical records is he took pictures like this. Now, Walter Kepner went uh, to talk to our colleagues, medical doctors. He did it once. Uh, the American Medical Association invited him to New York to present to a large group of medical doctors. And he showed these pictures right here, right in front of you showed these pictures about how a person with diabetes, severe, you know, ready to go blind, diabetic retinopathy, you could cure them with the rice diet. And, and one man stood up in the audience and said, you switch the order of the pictures. And Walter Kemper said, I will never talk to you again. And he never did. He never went back ever and talked to my colleagues. You know, there are days when I feel the same way, except I haven't given up. I still try and talk to my colleagues. Anyway, uh, th this is what you can accomplish. But remember, this is not just the eye. It's every place. If you took and you cut the kidneys open and you took a microscope and you look at the inside tissues, the kidneys, this is what you'd see. If you did the same thing with the brain. This is what you'd see. This kind of exudate occurrence and flame hemorrhages goes on throughout the body when you have sick blood vessels, when you have a sick metabolic system like diabetes. A uh, patient with heart disease. Sometimes the, the patients he would see would have the heart swollen because it was so weak, swollen to the size of the chest. And half the people who had this swelling of their heart their hearts went down to a normal heart size on the rice diet. Now here's a, a little girl, a little you know, teenager, young teenage girl. She's dying of, of uh, kidney disease, uh, glomerular nephritis. She was dying, you know. I mean, back then they didn't have the dialysis wards that are just money-making machines for the medical business. And so they had to do desperate things like feed them rice and fruit and fruit juice and table sugar. And here is the little girl just a few months later, you see a dramatic improvement in her health. And she reversed her kidney disease. And that would happen today, just like it happened, you know, back in, uh, in 1948, the year after. I was one year old then. Uh, psoriasis, uh, Walter Kempner, what had happened is psoriasis is a uh, autoimmune and a skin disease related to changes, uh, well, it's mostly an autoimmune disease. You know, he, he took care of people with rheumatoid arthritis, just like I do. I remember when I went to the Rice House, I went at least once, if not twice. And I met with uh, Frank Nealon and Robert Rosati and the team that was still carrying on the Rice Diet. And we talked about how our patients with rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, other inflammatory arthritis, they were cured. 
with not only my approach, but their approach. And, and what they did, they say to me, well, you know, Walter Kemper thought it was because of the low sodium nature of the diet. Yeah, he thought, he thought you know, getting the salt out, uh, uh, made it so that you didn't have an, auto, an autoimmune disease anymore because he really believed in salt. But who cares? You know, who cares whether it's a, a low salt or the fact that you've taken the animal products out, the important things, which he did. It was essentially a vegan diet. Well, I didn't show you this because you're gonna ask. Let me see if I can go back a few slides. You're gonna ask uh, whether or not he used animal products. And here, you see this statement here. Uh, later, usually at least a month after the initial phase of treatment, some additional uh, additions such as vegetables are made to the diet and still later, Others such as lean poultry and meats are added. So, you know, initially it was a vegan diet, strictly. And he wanted to do everything he could to get these people out of trouble. But once they got out of trouble, you know, he would tell them he could eat a little bit. You know, I'm sure Walter Kepner noticed just like I've noticed is uh, it's very difficult to eat a little bit. And you, you give somebody permission to eat just a little bit of, of meat or, or eggs or cheesecake or whatever they just lose control. And uh, that's why it's hard to give people a permission. And as my son has told me many times when he's taking care of patients with our approach, he says, you know, I, I don't have to, to teach people that they can have a little bit of meat, dad. You know, my patients, uh, they'll cheat on their own. You know, I need to teach them as strict as I can possibly teach them. So at least they have a reference. They'll do their own cheating. And that's the way it's been for, you know, 100 years that Walter Kemper has been working on this. All right, let's get back to some of the medical therapies that he has used. Okay, psoriasis, uh, here you go. But before Dean Ornish, before, and which, you know, he's done wonderful, amazing work, Dean has. Really changed the way people think about heart disease and how it should be treated. Walter Kemper proved that you could reverse artery disease with the rice diet. Uh, if you, this is classic. Every every medical student learns this, and everybody knows this. And when you go to the emergency room with chest pain, one of the basic tests that's done is an EKG. You, you could diagnose almost every case of heart attacks with an EKG and a history. You don't need any other fancy blood tests or angiograms, et cetera. You get the information from an EKG and a history, pretty much everything you know, except for a few circumstances. So to uh, find out whether or not the, the heart muscle is being compromised is you find a segment, segment of, the, uh, of the heart wave that you pick up on EKG, you have, you have the ST segment and that's this right here, you see ST depression. You know, it's depression about below the, the, the baseline. And that indicates that the heart muscle is not getting enough blood. Every doctor knows this, this is classic. And uh, this is normal, the ST segment is, is above the baseline. So, so here's a patient back in 1945, before I was born. And here you see the initial electrocardiogram, you see the ST depression, okay? Now, this person has ischemia low blood supply to the heart muscle. And, and then the person is checked up. Sorry about that. The, the person is, is checked, let's see, this would be like, well, it's a, a while later, it's 1940, it's only a couple of months later, between uh, December 19th uh, to January 18th. It's what, one month, one, one month. You know, Dean Arney shows that you can decrease the frequency of chest pain episodes by 91% in three weeks. So Walter Kepner showed the same thing in one month. You can reverse the low blood supply to the heart muscle. And that should be the fundamental therapy of anybody who has heart disease. You know, not just prevent, to prevent the next heart attack, but to get them out of trouble at the present time. Anyway, this is how, how we diagnose uh, heart attacks is with this ST segment. Uh, here's, here's the kind of treatment that he would offer for people with 
something called morbid hypertension, excuse me, malignant hypertension, malignant, morbid obesity, malignant hypertension. Uh, that means they have, they're going to have a stroke. They're going to have heart failure. Their blood pressures are like the top number is 220 to 260. The bottom number is 120 to 140. This is a medical emergency. Well, back in the 1950s, uh, well, 1959, we had the introduction of diuretics. But before that, before that, there were no really good blood pressure lowering medications to get the patient out of trouble. And so uh, what Walter Kempner would do was take care of these people who had malignant hypertension and put them on the rice diet. And he was able to get 60% of his patients down to a normal pressure with the rice diet. No medication, wasn't available, didn't use it. Okay, well, as I mentioned, you know, he had a lot of critics and, and uh, <clears throat> one of his critics, uh, what, what they did is they took six of his patients. Uh, they had hypertension and they had been on the Kempter diet uh, for six months and they put them in a metabolic ward. And, and they studied them carefully with everything they could. And uh, they're, they, they're thinking that they were gonna prove that a diet as simple as rice, fruit juice, uh, and, you know, fruit and simple sugar was inadequate. And it would cause these people to get sick and worse and wither away. And you know, they're right and Walter Kepner's wrong. Okay, so what they did is they uh, studied these people. You know, they had them under lock and key they were in metabolic wards and five of the six people showed objective clinical improvement with reduction in their blood pressure. Heart size became less. In other words, they went out of heart failure. Improvement in the eye grounds returned to normal. Their EKGs uh, ended up upright, just like I showed you. And these are, these are researchers whose goal was to prove Kemper was wrong. Anyway, um, that, that's what, not what they found out. And a lot of the criticism stopped on the Kempter diet. And you can look up this study. It's available for you on the internet. Just, uh, just put it into Google and it'll come up for you. Was, and, uh, okay, you want to learn a little bit about Walt Kempter. Uh, one of his be best friends is... Uh, wrote a, a, a biography of Walter Kempter and talk, talked about his time in, in Germany and how he worked with Otto Warburg, who was a very famous scientist. You, you hear about Otto Warburg these days because people tell you that sugar causes cancer and makes cancer, makes cancer worse. And they base it on Otto Warburg's work and they misrepresent Otto Warburg's work. But, you know, they get away with it because it takes a little work to read the science. Anyway, uh, he, he worked in the lab of Otto Warburg before he came over to Duke. And uh, he, he joined up with a team that worked loyally with him for many years. And in this book, which you can get on Amazon, still it's available. It's uh, Walter Kempter and the Rice Diet. And I think you'll enjoy it. All the things that I just told you about his research are there and available. But, you know, one thing, if you just want to go to to his work and you want to learn about it, all you have to do is go to our website. Okay, I had a chance, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to get his original publications. There are only a few copies available. And I, I was given the, what the, the uh, publications you see here on the left of it that are brown, brown in their color. Uh, th these are volume one of Kempner's work, which is published uh, mostly in German. And, and this volume two, that's 1,000 pages. And volume two is over 500 pages, which is published in English of, of the studies that I showed you and more. And these would have been lost, except that I got a hold of them and without permission, I, I took them to a place that uh, would scan them and turn them into digital documents. I, I couldn't find anybody to ask permission from. So I did it. And it's available to you. All you have to do is go to drmcdougall.com and look up Walter Kempner and his research and you'll find it easily. You can download it yourself. You can spend the next five years reading it if you want. 
I did the same thing for Nathan Pritikin. He published his uh, scientific data and, and you know, he only published 50 copies. And after he died, after Nathan Pritikin died, he, his wife gave me one copy of the book. And I just, I really cherish this work because it's all the things that he discovered in his lifetime that, that was published that you know, most of the things that people didn't know about how, how vision returned to normal and improvement in hearing and all, all kinds of really, really interesting work done from all over the world. And Nathan Pritikin put in this in this 500 page document. And again, I, I didn't get permission, okay? I didn't know who to ask it for. And the people I did, which is for family members, asked permission to, uh, to copy this for you. You know, they were vague about it. And so I went down to the, you know, to a copy office and I told them to put it on a digital copy. And then I put the original back on my bookshelf in my library. And some of you know what happened to my library. It went up in smoke in the Tubbs fires of October, 2017, everything, everything I lost, everything material I lost, nothing important. But that would have been, that would have been gone. I mean, you would have never been able to get that work. But you can go to drmcdougall.com and you can look at Nathan Pritikin and you can read his scientific work. It's really, really, really interesting to me. But they, they, you know, these two giants, they, they couldn't be lost as far as I was concerned. They're too much. Uh, and again, every doctor, every scientist, every guru you have on, on your uh, excellent podcast, AJ, you know, if they don't know about the work of Nathan Pritikin and Walter Kempner, I don't really have the time of day for them because they're just, they're, they're cherry picking the literature. They don't have a real basic understanding of what goes on, you know, and uh, they just confuse people. But uh, the, these two giants, these geniuses, you know, who published to work their whole lifetime with dedication to the patient. You know, I, I knew Nathan Pritikin privately, you know, personally. I, I, was a, I would say he was a, more than a casual friend of mine. And, you know, sometimes we would travel together and I would see him, he'd get a phone call. Now, Nathan Pritikin was not a doctor. He was a scientist, just a brilliant man. And he'd get a phone call from a patient or a family where they were sick with cancer or heart disease or whatever. He'd say, look, I, I got to stop the car and I got to get to a phone. You know, I, I know that I have to call these people. And, and he would just, whatever, it, it was just the patient that he cared about. You know, even if he had a, a lecture scheduled, uh, you know, in five minutes we were late. It was like, hey, find me a phone. I need to talk to these people right away. And Walter Kemp was the same way. He was interested in the people and uh, got great rewards because of it. Okay, so uh, the McDougal diet versus the Rice diet. Well, you know, very, Walter Kemp was very influential upon my career. One, one thing is he taught me about diet therapy, which is not taught in medical school at all. What, what does a medical student learn about, about nutrition is they learn biochemical formulas. That's what they learn. They learn, they learn about the chemistry of vitamins, et cetera. They do not learn anything about treating people with food. Not a single medical school in the country has this kind of education. And by goodness, don't you think that doctors ought to know what human beings eat and how you can get them well by changing their food? I think so, but they're not taught it. Well, Walter Kempner opened my eyes as my other heroes did, but he, he most importantly, and they also showed me, remember his diet was rice, fruit and fruit juice and table sugar, how a, such a simple diet could be not only safe, but highly effective. And it makes sense to me now, you know, initially when I, when I saw what he did, I, I was worried too about deficiencies and, you know, it was so opposite of what everybody else was saying, but I understand now. It's just like, you know, like fasting. You have tremendous healing with fasting. You got to take the burden off the body and let it do what it does best, which is to naturally heal. And you do it no better than with a diet like the Kempner diet. In other words, a starch-based diet. And, and I teach something called the, the elimination diet, which is 
the same darn thing. It, it just gives you things like sweet potatoes and rice and, and, and uh, you know, a few other things. But uh, a little bit more variety, but it's still tough. That's in my May 2014 newsletter, the, the elimination diet. Anyway, he was a big deal in my life, you can tell. And, I, and I'm so happy that I can carry his work on. Uh, before I was born, before I was born, Dr. Kempner had disproven concepts that are still held as true by me most medical doctors today. That's, that's, you know, more than 75 years ago, he proved incorrect what your doctor likely believes today, which is uh, diet has little to do with heart disease, that the addition of protein improves health, and that carbohydrate causes diabetes. Now, it's because of ignorance, because of the, the, the incorrect thing is taught to doctors. They're taught, they're, they don't look at the basic science, which I know and I try and teach. You wonder why you don't get well? You wonder why you get managed? You wonder why you get changed from one diabetic pill to another brand? You know, one blood pressure pill to another brand, one cholesterol lowering agent to another brand? You wonder why you, you never get your health back? It's because it's not part of the business. There's no reason to do it. There's no profit in it. Uh, I consider the McDougal diet the diet for the living. The Kepter diet is for the diet for the nearly dead. I probably three times a year, I, I see quite a few patients still and I would say about three times a year, I will put people on the Kempter diet. These are people who have like 10% of their kidneys left or 10% of their heart function left. They've lost 90% of kidney and or heart function. You know, I'll tell them, look, you, you, wanna, you wanna stay alive? You wanna, you know, your, your daughter's gonna graduate from college in a year and a half. You wanna have a chance to see that? They say, yeah, doc, I'd do anything. I'd eat cardboard. Well, you don't have to quite eat cardboard, but you need to go on the Kempter diet. And, you know, I actually have people who want to stay alive bad enough to do it. And that's what I use the Kempter diet for. It's powerful. But I consider the McDougal diet the diet for the living. And uh, we get same similar type of weight losses, not as fast, because the diet I recommend is uh, ad libitum. Ad libitum comes from the medieval Latin in accordance with what one wishes. You get to eat as much as you want, but of the right foods, okay? But you get to eat as much as you want. And we never impose calorie restriction on people. We never tell them they can only have one plate of food. In fact, I encourage people, I say, the more you eat, the faster you're gonna get well, but it's gotta be the right foods. And so we get weight losses like 90 pounds in 10 months. That's, that's similar to what Kempner got by feeding a diet of say 600 calories. Unlimited amount of calories. It probably they take in between a thousand and 2000 calories a day, but they're such good calories and the body responds so well and the body wants to be well so, so much and it has such a power once you unleash, unleash it that people lose tremendously and their blood pressures come down and their blood sugars come down, their diabetes goes away. Just like Walter Kempner's work, nothing's changed in 75 or hundred years. The principles still are the same. The sick people are still the same. There's just more of them. There's just more rich people all around the world, aren't there? You see it. Uh, again, this is a, somebody with massive obesity. Massive obesity, you know, she. She would have fit, she would have been one of those patients that if Walter Kempner saw him or his team saw her, they would have, she would have been put on calorie restriction. But when I started taking care of her and it, I, I told her she needs to eat ad libitum. Well, why would I have somebody eat ad libitum? Because I want you on this for a lifetime. This is not a diet. It's just a change in the kind of foods that you eat. I, I, I had a chance to present this patient to the world. When, uh, when a team of reporters came from the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, 
And what they're, they were trying to report is they're trying to report successful treatment of massive obesity. And what, what their definition was is the patient had to be, be over 50% body fat. In other words, a BMI over 50%. And uh, also they had to maintain their weight loss for over five years. They went to the National Weight Loss Registry, which has tens of thousands of people registered. They could not find a single case that fit what they were looking for. And I showed them the people that I'm gonna show you now. I showed them a whole kind of, all kinds of cases. And they said, well, you know, this one's not done it for five years, it's only been four and a half years. And this one started at a BMI of 48%. You know, it didn't meet what we're looking for. And, and then we came across this lady who, by the way, is still on our discussion board. You know, she started with a BMI of 53%, lost 150 pounds and has maintained it for, well, you know, this is more than 29 years ago. It's probably more like 37 years ago. It took her four years to lose it all. But you should note that she maintained it. She enjoys it. She's never hungry a single day. She loves her food. You can learn to like different foods. You'll never learn to like to be hungry. It hurts. And the only other option you have out there is to make yourself sick. And you do that with these ketogenic Atkins type diets that makes you sick. You can't stay sick for long. And that's why you go off those diets. You might as well learn what a human being eats and get it over with. I think so. Uh, here's another lady. She lost uh, she lost 110 pounds. Uh, that was 31 years ago. Eating ad libitum in accordance with one's wishes. She ate as much as she wanted. Never restricted a day the amount of food she ate. Only what she ate. Uh, this is one of our recent patients. Lost 149 pounds. Took her two years. Uh, that's pretty similar to the weight loss uh, that you see on the rice diet with with giving the patients uh, limited calories, you know, 500, 600 calories a day. That's all they got. Not this person. She could eat as much as she wanted. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I go through this, uh, you know, don't think that I'm giving you the best case examples. You know, don't think like uh, the disclaimer for Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig, that, that the disclaimer is this is the best case scenario. Don't expect these results. I'm telling you, expect these results. I've been doing this a long time. I've taken care of 12,000 patients in my career, which expands over a half a century. You should expect this to happen to you if you do it, okay? You, don't, you know, there are a lot of people out there that fool themselves, but they don't fool me. Uh, this lady lost 100 pounds, took her, that was 26 years ago, only took her a couple of years. Uh, she, again, is easy to find. She's doing well. Dropped her blood sugar, dropped her blood pressure. Uh, here, this lady is actually in the book, The Starch Solution. And I'm going to talk to you about the Starch Solution book. She's one of the examples that's in this book. Uh, she lost 92 pounds. It took her two years. All right. She'd have lost faster on the Kempner program. But she'd also been hungry all the time. Uh, she was able to get rid of arthritis. She was able to chase her grandkids around. She was really happy about that. Uh, this, this man it was the uh, chief financial officer for the state of Wisconsin. And uh, he worked all his life to, to make money, you know, financial security. And he was so sick by the time he was 58 that he had to medically retire from his position at 58 years old. And he decided that uh, it wasn't worth it to lose his health. You know, so what he decided to do is that he decided to get well, and he did. He changed his diet. He did it through the McDougall program. 40 pounds, took him seven months, got off all his drugs, as you should expect to do. You know, our, our research, as published in the scientific literature, shows that you, that nearly 90% of patients are able to reduce or stop their medications, especially those for diabetes and blood pressure. What are you waiting for? Uh, here's a man that was in big, big trouble, almost died a couple of times. Could never lose weight. He was uh, actually used to come to our potluck dinners when we lived in Hawaii back, back in the late 70s, early 80s. He would come to our potluck dinners and 
That's how I met him. And what motivated him to, to lose weight is he, he couldn't play with his kids. And uh, he had severe diabetes, arthritis, gout. Anyway, big trouble. 25 pills, weighed 450 pounds. Ate ad libitum, lost 166 pounds. Well, excuse me, what did it say there? What did I say? Did I tell you? He lost 265 pounds. All right, here's another fellow from Hawaii that we took care of for a while. He lost 166 pounds. Two years took him to lose. That would be compatible with what the, 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 the Kepler diet offers you, but no, no food restriction. Just, just the kind of food, but you know, a starch-based diet with fruits and vegetables, no nuts and seeds if you want to lose weight, no vegetable oils. Can't do it. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. Lots of carbohydrate to satisfy the hunger drive. Dropped his cholesterol. Well, I got a, a big news for you. Uh, you know, today is Saturday, July 16th, the year 2022. Big only happens maybe once a year, but it's happening tomorrow. And that is the book that I'm most proud of, the one that most of you enjoy and has done a lot of good for you. I know you like the McDougal program for maximum weight loss most. You know, published for the last 34 years. Okay. But you know, we want a good general overview of the diet. I think the starch solution is the best book. You know, it's, uh, it, it's got it all. And uh, it's one that's so readable, explains it so clearly why the human being is a starch eater, a starch abhor, a starch -itarian. Tomorrow, only one day, it won't happen after this. If you wanna buy a copy of the book, a Kindle copy, it's $1.99, you save $12. If you want to buy multiple copies in bulk, it's $2.99. Well, we bought 500 copies, you know, because we want to hand them out to our participants that go to our 12-day program. And we'll buy 500 copies, 1,000 copies a year of the book at, at a price of $2.99 for bulk. I mean, good grief. What a, what a bargain. Anyway, you get them for $1.99 tomorrow on Amazon, just go to Amazon, look at the big deal. It's not gonna be around on the 18th. It's gonna be only gonna be there on the 17th. And, you know, I would, I would encourage you to think about your friends and your family and those who have told you over and over again that what you do is nonsense and it's too hard to do and don't wanna hear about any of your diet crap. You know, especially, especially when you hear from professionals. You know, buy a copy for your doctor, for your dietitian, for your so knowledgeable friend. You know, just like Lois says, you know, if you can go a little further. I think every, every dietitian, every doctor should become certified in the starch solution. We offer a course, a uh, very, very extensive course. Uh, it involves about 15 lectures about the starch solution. I did it for the starch solution. And what happens when you take this course is you can become starch certified. And that means we'll give you a certificate that you can put in your window, you can you know, put it on the bumper of your car, I don't care, that says you know the starch solution. You gotta take a test though. You gotta pass the test, otherwise you don't get the certificate. But after you read through the, the book and you answer a few questions, not hard. Really, very easy test. And if you flunk it once, you get to take it again. Anyway, if you finally uh, pass the test and we can attest to the fact that you understand the starch solution. Doesn't mean you practice it. I mean, if you happen to be a nutritionist and you have some other flavor to your practice besides what I do, that's okay. You can advertise that you understand the starch solution. We can stand behind it because you passed the test. You know, I would, I would hope it would be something you were proud of and that you could at least say in addition to learning this and that and you know, whatever, you understand the low carbers and the keto people and whatever. You understand the starch solution, you pass the test. So that's a course that we offer. We also offer a course and, and that's CEU credited by the way, dietitians and nurses get credit for it. And we also offer a CME course, which doctors, osteopaths, medical doctors, osteopaths, and you know, pretty much anybody that wants, uh, we get CME credits on, on diet therapy, it tells you how I practice medicine over the last 46 years, it's good. Well, I think we're always in trouble. But uh, if you really would like some help and uh, you can do this on your own, 
if you're on a bunch of drugs and I think you need to see your doctor, I think you need to, I think you need to have some medical supervision because, well, you know, I tell you to see your doctor, but essentially none of them have experience in taking people off drugs. They're afraid to. But if you're fortunate enough to understand what's going on and you gave the doctor a copy of the Stark solution and maybe some of my other work and the doctor is willing to help you. And it's not all that hard. I mean, I, I've trained seven other physicians to practice our program. And we used to, you know, we've had programs where we took care of the, the employees of Whole Foods. So we'd have 150 people we saw during one program. CenturyLink, we take care of their employees. Uh, it's called Lumen. It's a big telemedicine, tele telecommunication uh, business. And we do a program at least once a year for them. And I have to bring in other physicians. I, of course, supervise everything. And, and I have to bring in other doctors because it's just too many people for us to see. Or I don't have to now, now that we do it telemedicine wise. But when we did it uh, at our resort in Santa Rosa, California, I needed, I needed help. And for me to train these other doctors to do what I do really didn't take much. It's so basic, it's so simple. Patients do so well. Science is so solid. Anyway, what we have now, and I, uh, I, would, I would encourage you if you, and most of you do need the help, you need the medical care, you need, uh, we offer telemedicine care. You need the supervision, you need to have somebody stand behind what you're doing and say, look, I took them off the insulin, the diabetic pills, because they're type two diabetics. And the fact that you got better is, you know, you might need more help. You might need more defense as to why you did what you did. And, and uh, Dr. Lim and I are here to explain exactly what we did and why. And hopefully it's a learning experience for everybody involved, including us. Anyway, uh, the basic diet that we would uh, like to have an opportunity to teach you, it takes 12 days. We're one one right now. We have 50 people from around the world who are involved in the McDougall program, the telemedicine program. And some of them have been through our resort program. And so they have a chance to compare, you know, and we ask them, we ask all of them that have been through both programs. So what do you like better? The answer is consistently, we like the telemedicine program better. We have people who work with you all day long. We have a support specialist. We, you know, help you decide what you're going to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We, you know, help you manage your diabetic medications and uh, blood pressure medications and so on. We're, we're, you know, we're professionals. People have been with us for from seven to 23 years. This is our staff. And so uh, we run a program every month. The next program is August 19th through 30th. And it'll fill up fast. I encourage you to get involved in it. And we'd like to have a chance to work with you. And it's a lot of fun. So ad libitum means as often as necessary and desired. Yeah. And I know you desire to be healthy. And I know you desire to eat. Well, if you are fed a diet ad libitum, then you get to do both. You get to be satisfied. You get to do what will cause you to get your health back. It's really so simple. <laughs>